Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so blessed to this. Listen, I feel the anointing of God's spirit strong right now. Praise God. Can we call for that daily bread? I'm telling you, I want to hear your testimonies. It's important you share them. Because what's happening here, I'm just imagining what, what he's doing over there in your life. So I want to hear, please share them with us. Share them with us. Just send in your testimonies. Praise God. Listen, let's call for that daily bread. Say, Father, I receive today my daily bread from you. Let the angels, Lord, bring them to me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Miracles are happening. I want to show you something very important. Joshua. Book of Joshua. Now we know Joshua is after the Deuteronomy. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. Now this is a very popular verse of scripture. That growing up, I mean if you grow up in a Christian home, you must know this. You must know this. It says, this book of the Lord, Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth. Now this was God commanding Joshua. And it says, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way. I want that. Now, now that's the part that gets my attention. It says, for then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall have good success. You shall make your way prosperous. So he didn't say you shall find prosperity. He said you shall make your way prosperous. Now I'm looking at this truth. So the book of the law shall not depart out of my mouth. Meaning I talk the word of God. I speak the word of God. Now this is so important. Everything about life, God has designed it that it comes from our mouth. Oh, you want to live good life? What did he say? Your mouth. Check your tongue. You want to enjoy life? Check your tongue. You want to stop getting sick? Check your tongue. You want a life change? Check your tongue. Now that's why the Holy Ghost was given to us. And guess what? All, everything, everything that you experience with the Holy Ghost ends in this utterance everything you experience with the holy ghost it produces words you see i always tell people this the sign that it's the holy ghost walking in any place if you want to know sometimes you say oh i went for this meeting i saw some strange things I don't know. I'm not. I don't know whether that is God or they are using something. You know, maybe maybe a certain church that you're not so sure about. Maybe they are using something else. But the kind of things I saw there, the kind of miracles I saw there. Now don't be moved by those miracles. Now, I didn't say they are bad, but if you want to know the test of the test to know if it is God or not is what the utterance. Check what is coming out from the preacher's mouth. Check what is coming out from the mouth of the people that are there. Check. Just check. Listen. If you will listen and you don't hear the voice of the Lord, if you listen and you don't hear the word of the Lord, then you know that that is not God. Because the end of everything God does is that you speak. If God does a miracle in your life, the end of it is that you speak. To see what you will call it. So if it is God. See that is doing it. He will put the right words in your mouth. You remember how Jesus made a statement. He says I do not speak of myself. See. He said the father that sent me. He is the one doing the work. But they say what do I do? I speak. Why, Why is he speaking and the father is doing the work? Because he needs to testify who the doer of the work is. 
So if it is God, then you will hear the voice of God. You will hear the word of God. If it is not God, then there is no way you're going to hear the word of God in a place that God is not there. I tell people this, there is no manifestation of the Spirit of God that doesn't end up in words from the Spirit of God. So after all the shaking and crying and jumping, you, you've got to listen for what the Lord is going to say to you. If you don't hear that voice, after all the shaking and jumping and screaming, if you don't hear that voice, most likely it was not the Spirit of God that was at work in you. Because He's not going to just come and shake this whole place and walk away. He, when He comes to shake, He's trying to get everyone's attention. When He gets the attention, what do you think He's getting the attention for? That He may speak. Why is it important that God speaks to us? When God speaks to you, he is putting his words in your mouth. See? And guess what? God's speech to you will not produce a miracle. It is when you speak that same word that he has spoken to you that the miracle begins. So if God said to you, I have healed you. Now you heard it. You heard it. And you say, okay, when I see it, I will believe. Oh, sorry. The devil can steal that healing from you. But you are there and God says, look, I have healed you. Like, you know what? I receive my healing. God have healed me. Praise God. Now, when you begin to say it, when you begin to say it, everything about you begins to respond to it because guess what you are speaking truth and that's why the holy spirit was given to us so the holy spirit puts words in our mouths and when he put words in our mouth we say it now when we begin to say what the holy spirit is saying to us that's actually what joshua wanted it was saying this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth because god's word is regarded as laws he wasn't just talking about the Ten Commandments here. He was talking about every word that God speaks to you. For example, you know God was, before this, this verse, God was saying to Joshua, Only be thou strong and very courageous. Guess what? That is a law. So now, if Joshua is doing his stuff and he, then he realizes he's getting so discouraged, he's getting tired, he, he looks at the people, the people are not even responding to him. So, you know, times come when you get so discouraged with people. You see how frail they are. You see how they fail, some even deliberately. So you look at man and you're just like, what is this? But guess what? It is at that point, God is expecting Joshua to remember only be thou strong and very courageous. So when that happens, now you want to get discouraged. You want to be like, you know what? I don't think it's worth it leading all these people into, into the promised land. I mean, look at them. Can they even handle the promised land? They will go there and they will scatter things. I don't know. I, I, I'm tired. Then you remember, only be thou strong and of good courage. Like, I'm going to do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Now, guess what just happened? This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night so that you will observe to do. Now, God has spoken to you. Do this thing. And then he says, be strong and of great courage. Now, everything in life shows or every disappointment that is shown at you in life is to get you to change your focus. Is to get you to get discouraged from going in the direction that God has commanded you to. But that's where you remember what God said. Be strong and very courageous. Now, what is courage? What does courage mean? Is the ability to act right in the presence of fear and danger. The ability to act right in the presence of fear and danger. So not that you don't feel the fear, not that there is no logical reason for you to stop or be afraid, but hey, what he is giving to you is courage. Say, so you know what? There is one thing I know in this situation. And what is that one thing? He is here 
with me. If he's here with me, he's not going to let them put their hands in my eyes. He's not going to let them, no, he's not going to do. So what, what am I going to do? I'm going to keep my focus. And because he's here with me, Lord, should I go forward? And then the Lord says, go forward. Thank you, sir. I'm going forward. And you keep advancing. And you keep advancing. And you keep advancing. And I'm telling you this truth. Guess what? When you get to that thing that you thought was a mountain, you discover it was just a mirage. Why? Because he will not command you to go to a place that will destroy you. I remember this great man of God, you know, Jesse Duplantis. He shared how, you know, many years ago, he went to preach somewhere. And, and in those days, when, when a preacher comes to town, he stays in, they, they, they don't lodge them in hotels. They stay in members' houses, you know. So he, he was in this house. And, and sometimes the experiences are different, sometimes good, sometimes terrible. So you know how this church, like, okay, who, who can donate their house for the preacher to stay? Oh, okay, we have our children's room where we can clear it up and then he can stay there. So he said he went to this house and, and he was just sleeping because he was tired after the meeting. So he was lying down and, and sleeping. In the middle of the night, he opened his eyes and he, he saw something at the window that was just doing like, ooh, you know, and like it also come, you know, and the room was dark. He said he was so scared. He was like, what is this? This thing has come to attack me after my preaching. <laughs> oh, he started binding and casting. He said, I bind in the name of Jesus. Get out of this place. And he goes, whoo. <laughs> you know, like, I bind you. I bind you. He, he kept binding and binding. And suddenly, the word of the Lord came to him. He said, son, stop binding. Go and touch it. Oh, no, no, I can't touch it. I can't touch it. In the name of Jesus, get out, get lost. I bite the losses. Go touch it. No, I'm not touching it. No, I'm not touching it. It's got to go. It's got to leave that place. He kept binding and binding and binding and binding until it was morning and light rays began to come into the room from the sun. Then he realized that it was a raincoat that was hung in that window. <laughs> He, he, when light began to come in, like, oh, hold on, what have I been minding? Raincoat. Hey, I got bad on And he said, Lord, you allowed me to be awake all night. And then I said, but I told you to go touch it. He said, but Lord, you should have told me that it's not, it's not a demon, it's raincoat. He said, but I told you to go touch it. If you had obeyed me to go touch it, you would have realized since maybe five minutes into your prayer, that there is nothing there. So that's how the Lord, he, he gives you a command. And this is our operating principle. He will not tell you to go do something that's going to hurt you. So if the Lord says, go touch it, then obey him. Go with courage and touch it like, oh, can, can, you, can you just imagine? I thought it was something else. Praise God. Yeah, that's the truth. He will never tell you to go to do something that will hurt you. Let that be a working principle in your mind with God. He will never tell you to go do something that will hurt you. You know, sometimes God tells you to do something. You say, what sin did I commit now that God wants to punish you? What sin did I commit? Well, maybe. No, that's not true. God is not going to give you an instruction that will punish you. He's not going to give you an instruction that will hurt you. He will not, he will never do that. Never, never, never will he do that. Know him for that. He's bigger than that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you. Thank you for your blessing today, Lord. Thank you for the daily bread that you've released already on our behalf. And everyone listening to me right now is a recipient of their daily bread i declare in the name of the lord jesus it is coming to them where they are you will not even as much as go look for it it is coming to meet you where you are in the name of the lord jesus i release you to this blessing right now i release you to this focus right now i release you to be rightly positioned in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, precious Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.
Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.